Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about how much of this do you need to come to Asia to trial and find a football team. There are so many factors to consider and we're going to make a clear picture of how much money you, you know, roughly need to come to Asia and trial. Now, the story behind this bad boy, it's a one South Sudanese pound. Most of you probably haven't seen it before. It's from a good friend of mine. He gave it to me as a souvenir. He actually played for the South Su Sudanese national team. I played with him in Germany. He's, he's from the good old US of A. And he's got a really interesting story and hopefully we'll get him on this channel one day. Yeah, so it'll be good to go visit him and see how it is over in America. All right, let's get this episode started. Mm -hmm. So I'm in Kuala Lumpur at the moment and gonna head out to get some uh, groceries and I'll talk on the way. So I'm staying at my friend's apartment at the moment in Kuala Lumpur before I head to my new team in the next couple days. His apartment's really cool because it's connected to a shopping mall. You can just go through the uh, basement and it goes direct into the shopping mall, which is sick. Okay, so the first thing you need to consider when you go overseas is insurance because you don't want to get in an accident and then it's going to cost you a lot of money as a foreigner in a foreign hospital. As you can see, it's connected to the Starling Mall. So an incident that happened to my brother's friend, he was in an island off the coast of Thailand and he stepped on a coral coral rock and he got a bad infection and he had to be airlifted from a helicopter off the island to the to the main city and in the end with the treatment and the surgery it cost him like ten thousand dollars and if he had insurance it would have covered for it so it only costs you know fifty to a hundred dollars depending on which country you visit if you visit a place like America obviously it's going to be a lot more but some countries are a lot cheaper and you just need to find a good insurance that will cover you for accidents like this. So this is a grocery store in Malaysia, a lot of different fruit, imported from everywhere like a normal supermarket. Got some dragon fruit, blueberries, strawberries, coconuts, everything here. Also selling one of my favourite mushrooms. Have you guys seen these before? So North Korea is a big producer of these types of mushrooms. Same with Germany. Used to get them a lot in uh, summer. Very nice. Fried up with some butter. Beautiful. A lot of different roots here. Love a good root. Aussie slang. All right, check out this meat section. They got black chickens here for sale. They got some chicken feet for two ringgit. So that big packet there is like nearly, nearly 50 cents, 50 American cents. The next thing I want to talk about is food. Now, because I'm in the shopping mall, I'm going to show you some of the restaurants here. And I'm going to show you the difference in, in prices between like a local place to eat at and a restaurant and the price difference is massive. So if you want to save money, you're going to be eating more local food. All right, got my produce. We're having fresh spring rolls tonight. Love it. So if you eat at one of these restaurants, it's going to cost you like 30, 40 ringgit, which is, you know, like 10 American dollars per meal. For example, this uh, Vietnamese uh, restaurant that I'm going to show you. So 
At this Vietnamese restaurant, if you get a pho, a noodle soup, it's gonna cost you around 30 ringgit. Now let's go outside over here and I'll show you some local stores. Okay, so if we go out on the street, these all these small little stores on the side, they're gonna have uh, cheap little restaurants to eat at. So I've just gone down the road. This is like a food court. So for example, this is like noodles. It's called Pan Mi and it's only like five ringgit. Less than one euro, or a bit more than one euro. Really nice. And then you've also got vegetarian. This is all vegetarian. Like noodles. It's all cheap as well, six ringgit. Here's a chef cooking up some noodles. Beautiful. And this is where the best food is at. Very cheap. Them little food places, it's just five ringgit. Compared to inside, it's 30, 40 ringgit. So at a restaurant, it's like eight times the cost. So if you want to save money, then you want to eat at these local places. And these local places produce the best food. Don't always go into a restaurant. That's a sin. Go out and explore the country you're in, eat what the locals are eating, and you'll enjoy it. So it's nearly Chinese New Year at the moment. The mall is filled with Chinese New Year stuff. I'll show you. They've uh, decorated it up. Lucky color red. Getting home now to go eat and make these spring rolls. All right guys, welcome back. I'm now at the airport. I didn't film anymore when I came back from the uh, shops. I had to prepare dinner. So now I'm gonna talk about your biggest expense when coming to Asia and it's flying. It's your flight cost. So I'm from Brisbane in Australia and instead of flying from Brisbane direct to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, I travel one hour away to the Gold Coast and there's a budget airline that flies from the Gold Coast direct to Kuala Lumpur and it's much cheaper. I always look at a site called Skyscanner first to get a good idea of when is the cheapest flights. So it gives you a good idea of all the different flight times, the flight days, and you can compare it. Once I find my flight on Skyscanner, I will go direct to the flight company. I don't book through this, this Skyscanner website. I go direct to the flight company and I book through them and you save cost on that way as well. Now if you're from a country in Europe or from a country in Africa, the flight times are a lot longer and you're going to have a lot of more options to choose from. So yeah, you need to compare the best, the best flights, look at different days, different times to find the best um, option that suits you. Sometimes you can get ridiculous flight paths, like traveling over 40 hours to get to Asia, which is, you know, a bit ridiculous. Sometimes it's better to pay a little bit more, have a bit more comfort, and have a shorter flight, a better route. So that's always a good thing to consider. All right, so I've got a flight to catch, and I will talk to you guys soon. Okay, so another major expense would be the accommodation. And yes, accommodation is cheap in Asia, but it adds up over time. If you're lucky and you have friends or family that you can stay with, then that's gonna be fantastic because you save a lot of money that way. When it comes to booking a place, you wanna make sure that you're not booking for too long, just one or two days at a time because you never know when you have to move to a new city if you have to try with a new team, so you you can't book for one week, two week periods. You just do it day by day. Take it how it is. Also, depending on what type of club you trial at, sometimes the club will pay for your accommodation for the length of your uh, trial, whether that be one week or two weeks. I've had uh, clubs that have paid for my accommodation while I've trialed, and there's been some clubs which haven't paid for my accommodation. So if you need to look for accommodation, there's a few things that I do. So when I'm booking accommodation, I normally go on a site like booking.com. I look for a place with good reviews, not too expensive, a reasonable price. And then once I find that hotel, 
I will type that hotel name into Google. I'll look at the price on the, the hotel's website and also compare it to other accommodation providers like Agoda. And sometimes when you do that, you'll find better rates on different uh, booking websites. So that's how I find my accommodation. It's always good to make sure that your accommodation is close to your training ground because you don't want to be stuck in traffic, especially in Bangkok. Say your training ground is 10 kilometers away in peak hour traffic, that's going to take like over an hour. So make sure that it's close by so that you're not stuck in traffic and that's the worst thing you could possibly do come late to a training, especially when you're trying to make a good impression. That's not good. Yeah, so if you're on a tight budget, then you need to look at backpacking places where you have one room and it's a dormitory and you have to, you know, live with six or seven other people in that dorm. It's cheap in Bangkok, for example, you're looking at five to ten dollars a night for a low budget room. Maybe you're only paying ten to twenty US dollars a night. And it's got the basic stuff, more than, more than you need. You've got a toilet, shower, sometimes TV, aircon, and your bed. That's pretty much all you need when you're trialing. If money is really tight or you just want a totally different experience, you can go to a site like couchsurfing.com where you stay at people's places, you message them, they will list their apartment or their accommodation online. You message them and say, okay, can I stay at your place on these dates? And if they say yes, then you're good to go. So that's another option that you can explore. Yeah, I'll uh, make the calculations at the end so you get a good idea of how much accommodation will cost roughly per month and how much you need. So if your place is $15 a night, just on average, then over 30 days, it's gonna be $450. But we'll uh, discuss that later and I'll make a you know, a list that shows everything, your food costs, your accommodation, transport, all that, and we'll add it up so you get a rough idea. Okay, so the final expense that I wanna talk about is transportation costs. And I'll give Bangkok as an example. So when you arrive in Bangkok airport, there's a few options how to get to the city. So the cheapest option is by bus. There's also a train, express train, which is more expensive. And then you've got the taxi. Now when you travel with taxis in uh, Thailand, just giving you the heads up, you should always use a meter. If a taxi doesn't want to use a meter, then don't even bother. Go to the next taxi and find one that will take with uh, the meter running. Especially in tourist place, they will not want to use meter, so you have to kind of go down the road until one will use it. If they don't use the meter, then they can charge you any price, and that will cost you a fortune, and it puts you in a, in a bad situation. I think it's the law that they have to use meter if you ask for it. Another thing that you can do if you think there's going to be a confrontation later when you have to pay, just take a photo of the uh, license plate and also in the taxi cab they'll have a picture and uh, the name of the driver. So that's another thing to be aware of. Now to getting around the city, you should look at the public uh, transport options in Bangkok for example. Buses, again in peak hour traffic it's very slow you can be stuck in traffic for two hours or more so it's good to use like the trains the MRTs it's quicker to get around the city so always explore them public uh, options and you'll save a lot of money on that instead of just catching taxis everywhere if you're living far away from the training ground it's not going to be good for transportation costs if you're living somewhere close it's not going to be so expensive also, if you've got an agent driving you um, from your accommodation to the training ground, then that's perfect. So you don't need to spend money there. Also in Asia, there's the application Grab. It's like Uber. Uber doesn't run in Malaysia anymore. Uh, Grab took over, I think, most of Southeast Asia. It's exactly like Uber. You put in your location and then your destination and a person will come pick you up. And it tells you the exact price. Also, if you're trialing, then you've got to factor in 
costs like maybe you have to fly to another part of the country or catch a train to another part of the country so you've got to leave a bit of money on the side for that as well. When I first came to Bangkok I had a couple trials and then my agent found me a trial in Chumpon and to get there I had to catch an overnight train. There was also a flight but caught the train it was cheaper as well and again with trains there's also different class seats that you can buy so if you're if you want to save money then you can get in the lower lower class seats and trains are, are quite inexpensive buses are also inexpensive but uh, with buses sometimes they're pretty crazy on the roads over here but um, trains are very safe okay finally got around to it now I'm gonna give you the total summary for 30 days I'm going to give the case example of staying in Bangkok and when I talk about Bangkok for 30 days I'm going to give the worst case scenario in terms of you paying for all your accommodation, pay for all your own food, transport costs, etc. So this figure is the worst case and if you're staying with friends and family you're going to reduce this cost by a lot. If you're eating local food all the time, no restaurants, again this amount will be reduced. So with Bangkok as a case example, in Southeast Asia, Bangkok is relatively expensive. If you compare that to countries like Myanmar, Cambodia, then places are cheaper to trial in. Bangkok would be comparable to Hanoi, similar costs, same with Malaysia, similar costs. Singapore would probably be the most expensive in Southeast Asia. Now to start off with, I'm going to exclude the flight cost because you are all different, you all come from different countries and there's no way I can give you an average, so you can add that on to yourself. To start off with, we'll talk about insurance. On average for 30 days, I would say it would be around 75 US dollars. Number two, the food cost. If you're eating local, not at restaurants, it's going to cost you, if you're eating three times a day, I would say 15 US dollars. So over 30 days, that is 450 US dollars. Okay, so transport costs, I would estimate that to be around 15 US dollars per day. That is transport to and from the airport, catching some taxis here and there. So 15 US dollars sounds right, 450 for the 30 days. Now obviously if you're living in Bangkok, once you find a team, you'll find ways to reduce that because that's actually quite expensive, 15 US dollars a day. You'll be able to catch MRTs, use motorbikes, you can go with teammates to training, so you're going to save costs there. The next thing is accommodation. Now a budget place, just a basic place, it's going to set you back 15 US dollars a night for 30 days, that is 450 US dollars. Also we'll put $100 aside for visa cost or whatever else comes up, you never know the unexpected, so we'll factor that in as well. So if you add that all up, it's going to cost you for 30 days $1,525. Now like I said before, if you've got family and friends that you can stay with, that number is going to be reduced, you can get that easily to under a thousand US dollars for the month. Now I want to make you guys aware of this. It's a warning. If you're coming to Thailand on a one-way ticket, make sure that you've got enough money for your ticket home. So what has happened to quite a few players is that they've come to Thailand on a one-way ticket. They think they'll find a football team but after the 90 days or however long their visa is, they haven't got a team. You've got no work permit so effectively you're illegal in the country and if you get caught and if you stay quite quite a long time over you'll get a massive fine and if you can't pay this fine you'll get sent to prison and that's actually happened to quite a few players and Thai prison is not a joke so you've got to be careful about that and until you find enough money to buy your ticket home you won't be allowed out this is the reality so be very careful about that because it's a terrible situation to be in. So yeah, just to summarize guys, look there's many uh, costs that you need to consider when coming to Asia if you want to try and find a football team. You can save a lot of money if you do it the right way. 
and also you can spend a lot of money if you don't. So that is just a lot of tips that I've given you. Consider that uh, when you when you travel. It's just also some good travel tips I've put in there. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I learnt a lot traveling in Asia in the last you know 10 years so I've, I've, I've gone through a lot and I'm just uh, trying to share some of my experiences and advice and hope you guys enjoyed this video you know the usual drill smash that thumbs up and subscribe if you're new and until next time guys ciao